and I watch another YouTuber suggest that Simeon could be using two plates and the friction would cause you to have to push even harder. Coach Greg, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to get the jacked arms of your dreams. The biggest arms possible, biceps and triceps, and in doing so, we're going to follow Simeon Panda's arm training routine. And so if you have an arms only day, you could do straight sets of biceps, finish that first, and then move on to the triceps, or you could alternate back and forth, doing one set of biceps, one set of triceps. I'm a fan of alternating sets, doing the buys, then the tries. going to get your workout done a lot quicker, give your biceps a chance to rest while doing the triceps, and so on. And if you don't have an arms only day, well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter! The Rock knows you can train biceps on a separate day, for example, back and biceps, and triceps on a different day, for example, chest, shoulders, and tries. And so in watching this workout, going to give you the points I agree with, and perhaps some that I disagree with, in the hopes of educating you on using better form and technique during your workouts. And we should point out that this is a dumbbell focused workout and so you don't need a lot of equipment. If you have the equipment, of course you can and should use it, but you can use these exercises in addition to your regular routine. And up first is the close grip dumbbell press. And so if you read the fine print, it does say that this is also a very strong chest exercise. And in my opinion, this is going to work the chest more so than the triceps. And so for me, not the best triceps exercise you can do. In bold, it says, keep pushing the dumbbells together for the entire duration of your set. However, However, by doing that, you're actually increasing the engagement of the pec muscles and not, in fact, the triceps. And so if you're trying to focus this on doing the triceps, this tip doesn't actually make sense. So try it yourself. Squeeze the dumbbells together, press hard, and what do you feel activating? You're going to feel the chest. It feels like you're doing a most muscular pose where you're flexing and squeezing the chest pressing forward, you can feel the contraction in your chest. It's not adding to the contraction of the triceps. And so pressing forward, I feel my chest engaging. I do not feel an enhanced activation of the tricep muscle. And so the problem with this exercise, especially if you're strong, is that you're not going to get a great range of motion. The dumbbells are touching your chest before you can go all the way down. The bigger the dumbbells, the less range of motion you'll experience. If you're not very very strong and have a five or seven and a half pound dumbbell, you'll be able to reach fairly far down. But if the dumbbell is thicker, you're not going to have as great a range of motion. And notice at the top, he doesn't have full range of motion. He can't completely extend the arm. So this exercise has a limited range of motion and is not ideal for building the triceps. I think this could be a finishing style of exercise on a chest workout, but I don't think it's ideal to build the best triceps. And considering we're using dumbbells, what do I think could be a better exercise for the triceps? Well, you could in fact sit upright and do tricep extensions. In doing so, you can get a much greater range of motion. Just look how much further the dumbbell is behind my head. And in doing this exercise, it is very easy to fully contract and extend the arm. Well, what else can be done? Well, while laying back in the same position as Simeon, with the arms extended, just simply lower them to behind the head extend back down. That will allow for a greater range of motion and more contraction of the triceps. However, if you do want to use it for chest, I actually prefer using a plate so you can get really close like that and squeeze. You know, that and it is in fact true, you can use a plate and squeeze hard like this. However, I don't think that's gonna make it more beneficial than the dumbbells. Perhaps if you're very weak and you can't lift a lot of weight, but someone with Simeon strength or my own strength, or perhaps you at home, when you're doing this exercise, how much weight could you actually press? For example, the biggest plates that most gyms have are 45 pound plates. Squeeze a 45 pound plate and press it to extension. That is not heavy, you are literally pressing 45 pounds with two arms. How many of you can't bench press more than 45 pounds? Not only that, what kind of range of motion are you actually getting? By the time you get halfway down, the bottom of the plate is going to be touching your chest. So all you can literally do is extend the top range of motion while squeezing the chest. Rather than that, it's only 45 pounds. Why not flex and pose in the mirror? Perhaps place your hands together, squeeze hard as you can, much harder than 45 pounds, and press outwards. 
Pretend you're a bodybuilder or do a most muscular crab pose, fist together and flex and pose the chest in the front. You can do the regular set, the bench press, flex and squeeze and pump up the chest for a greater burn. Not only that, if you are in fact a bodybuilder, you're doing the exact pose that you're going to be doing on stage. And so while keeping in mind the principle of specificity, if you want to look the absolute best you can in a pose, does it not make sense to practice this pose? Sure, develop muscle hypertrophy by doing your regular sets within the proper range of motion. And when you're done, enhance it by going through the mandatory poses. That to me makes more sense than laying back and using 45 pounds and extending outwards. And I watch another YouTuber suggest suggest that Simeon could be using two plates and the friction would cause you to have to push even harder. And so although this sounds great on paper in the real world, it does have inherent dangers. You could perhaps slip as you're approaching failure. You're going to get tired. You slip, drop the plates, snap and break your tooth, your nose and so on. Also, unless you're extremely weak and perhaps only using the five pound plates to squeeze together, you're not going to have the range of motion that you need to properly activate the chest and go through that full range of motion. And so I would caution against using the two plate method as I do believe believe the risk benefit ratio is not there. And if you really do want to try this method, the squeeze and press technique using plates, I would suggest if possible to try and use cables. With cables, you're going to squeeze the cables together and you can do the same motion with that tension. Also, easier to progressive overload, easier to use more weight, and you can in fact get the full range of motion. The plates are not in the way. It's not going to hit your chest on the way down. You can go all the way down with the cables squeezing together going top to bottom. And so when analyzing workout, it's important to think, what can I do in the real world? What equipment do I have? What do I not have? If you only have dumbbells, then of course, you have to make do with what you have. You're not going to have an ideal workout. Still going to be good, just not as good as if you have cables, free weights, machines, and so on. And up next, dumbbell hammer curls. I've never been a fan of this exercise ever since I first started lifting at only 10 years of age. Whether with dumbbells, barbells, I simply don't like hammer or reverse curls. However, just because I don't like it doesn't mean you shouldn't do it. The hammer curl overall works the entirety of the arm, the biceps and the forearms to a greater degree than if you're lifting with a supinated grip. And what's the difference between supinated and pronated? Well, it's simple. Supinated you can hold a cup of soup. Just like that. You have your hands supinated. When supinating, doing bicep curls, it's going to place greater stress on the entirety of the biceps and less on the forearms. Also, the peak. And so when your hand is pronated, it's going to work more forearm and when it's supinated, more of the biceps. Compare. Flexing the biceps, pronated, less peak. Supinated, brings in the peak. Pronated, supinated. You can see clearly the bicep is changing, it's becoming engaged. And so when doing hammer curls, you're getting less of that supination, less peak on the biceps, but more forearm. So it's a trade-off. And so if your goal is to build bigger forearms and less biceps, hammer curls could be the way to go. However, if you're more like me trying to create greater peak and size to the biceps, I do recommend to do supinated curls. Another thing to remember when doing hammer curls is please don't eagle lift. Simeon Panda is using a little bit too heavy a weight. He's swinging the weight. He's super strong. I don't know if he's got 80 or 85s. It's a lot of freaking weight. But what he's doing is he's making that weight feel easier. Rather than that, use the mentality of I'm going to use the lightest weight that I can make feel heavy. It may not look heavy, but you can make a weight feel much heavier than it really is. When you're leaning forward with the shoulders, arms back, you can in fact use the deltoids to begin the motion. You're swinging it forward using momentum and the bicep doesn't have to fully activate until it's about halfway up. You then lean back and it makes it easier. And so rather than that, use as strict a form as possible. Begin with the dumbbell slightly out in front of you. I do this all the time when doing my style of bicep curls, which works the peak that much more. Rather than doing hammer curls like this, I supinate my hand outwards and I curl like so. My baby finger is higher than my thumb. I also will curl to the side. As you can see, my baby finger higher than my thumb, baby finger here, thumb over here, higher, and I curl outwards using very strict form. 
I go slower on the way down and faster on the way up. I do these at the same time for the first several reps. My beginning form is ultra strict with no swing, but then as I fatigue, I then say, I'm going to use a little body English. There's nothing wrong with cheating when doing curls. Don't cheat on the curls, cheat on the girls, but always start as strict as possible at the beginning. That way you will maximally stimulate the biceps through the proper range of motion and time under tension. Another advanced training technique I enjoy doing for biceps is I'll start with a heavier dumbbell, for example, the 50s. After I reach failure, perhaps at eight to 10 reps, I drop to the 40s and do another five to six reps after that. Now remember, no matter how you perform a curl, your arms are in fact going to grow. There's no way to curl a weight without using the biceps. Whether you use a supinated grip a neutral or hammer grip or a pronated grip, you're still going to be using the biceps to perform those curls. Does not matter which way your hand is, the bicep, it still must contract. However, the supinated grip is in fact going to engage the biceps the most. Up next, dumbbell tricep kickbacks, which to me is one of the worst exercises you can do if you're trying to build huge arms. And yes, it's still gonna work the triceps to a degree. However, there are so many other better exercises that I simply don't think this is one you should do. But if doing this exercise, let's make sure you do it right. Okay, so Simeon suggests don't use any jerky motions, don't swing the weights, use great control and choose a weight that you can handle. Great tips. Problem is, unless you're using a really heavy weight, this exercise is simply too easy. You're only using a small range of motion. You might think your arm's moving a lot, but the tricep is not being engaged. Leaning forward, you can see at the start position, my bicep is actually doing the work. The tricep muscle right in the back is not engaged. At this level, the tricep muscle still not engaged. Gravity is doing the work. The bar wants to go down. So in this position, I'm kind of using my back. It's almost as if I'm doing a dumbbell row. Not until I break 90 degrees that the tricep begins to work. From this position to this position, that is the only part that the tricep is doing a lot of work. In this position, the weight feels excessively light. It's very easy right here. When I get up to this position, it's nearly impossible. And so the stress on the muscle only really kicks in at the top portion. And so in doing this exercise, you're typically only going to really feel the contraction at the top. It is very difficult to fully extend the arm when using a weight that's somewhat challenging. This is seven and a half pounds and watch when I use strict form. I'm only feeling a contraction really from here to here, maybe 10, 15 degrees. I feel nothing at the top. And if I use a weight that I can handle, for example, 30 or 40 pounds, it's too difficult to slowly contract at the top. I can't pause and therefore it's too heavy. I would need to ego lift. And so what happens is if you're lifting a weight that's heavy enough to strain the triceps throughout the range of motion, you're actually going to need to use a lot of swinging, body English, cheating, and so on. And so I don't like to use this exercise. And so rather than this, I'd much rather see someone doing dumbbell overhead tricep extensions or skull crushers with dumbbells. And you can see in this position, he's actually working the biceps at this point. Once you go past vertical, you're no longer engaging the triceps. It doesn't benefit you to keep going up. In comparison, when doing a triceps press down, you're pressing the bar the entire time. Even though your arm is up as in doing a bicep curl, you're still pressing and engaging the tricep. That means you're going through a much greater range of motion than is possible when using dumbbells. And I get it, not everyone has cables, but if you don't have cables, I still think it'd be better to do other dumbbell exercises. Also, we don't need to overcomplicate things. Whatever happened to doing close grip push-ups? Close grip push-ups, you don't need a dumbbell, barbell, cables, nothing. You can press hands together and push, and you are going to engage the triceps to a great degree and also engage the chest. Up next, waiter curls where you're basically like a waiter holding a tray in front of you. You have the dumbbell between each hands. It says contract your biceps at the peak of the movement. 
I'm not sure if that's the best possible advice. Perhaps it wasn't worded properly. I would perhaps say pause for one second at the top while holding the bicep contraction because, because it's physically impossible to lift in this fashion without contracting the bicep. That's literally the muscle that's lifting the dumbbell. And so you must automatically be contracting the biceps throughout the range of motion. However, if you say to pause at the top, stop, slowly lower the dumbbell, pause and squeeze hard at the top, that is giving you a cue. Lift slowly, pause, squeeze hard, and slowly lower the bar back to the starting position. And so I do believe he's doing the exercise correctly. I just believe the words to describe what to do could be a little bit more descriptive than last time. And so I'd like to explain my own version of these. I called them plate curls. I've been doing them for over 25 years. I do these as a superset after already pre-fatiguing the biceps by doing a straight set of curls to failure. I then grab the 45 pound plate at two o'clock and four o'clock. Beginning with the plate close to the chest, chest height, lower the plate while keeping it vertical all the way to arms extension. Curl the plate back up to starting position while keeping it vertical while squeezing the chest and the biceps. We spoke earlier about pressing together like this to get chest using triceps as well. Well, you can in fact flex the biceps and get the chest flexed and pumped at the same time. This is an amazing exercise to do before walking out on stage. You're pumping the biceps, pumping the chest, getting full vascular. It also looks very impressive in the mirror. You will be shocked the veins vascularity that you can get while doing this set. And as an added bonus where I don't enjoy doing hammer curls, this allows me to effectively work my forearms. The brachioradialis, brachialis, these muscles are heavily engaged while also training and pumping up the biceps and chest. Obviously when I lift with you, I think about can I keep up, but... I always keep up, you always keep yeah, up. No, when training with someone more experienced, bigger, stronger, faster than you, don't think you have to keep up with them. You don't need and should not use the same weights as they do. I've trained with a number of people in the past. Oftentimes I'm stronger than them, not always. And even if I'm stronger, I don't want them to use the same weights. Feel free to use the weight that you need. For example, if you're training with your significant other and she's benching 100 pounds and you're benching 300 pounds, just remove the plates. Set it up properly. Don't think that you both need to use the same weights. And you focus on form, which is what I love. You're not messing around. Like right. Some people, all right, let me just keep up and grab a weight that I can't handle, but... Exactly. Excellent tips from Simeon saying, if you're training with a partner, focus on form. Don't ego lift. Just because they're lifting with heavy weights doesn't mean you need to. And if you've never heard of Simeon Panda, then perhaps it's possible. Perhaps you are, in fact, living under a rock. He has an amazing physique, one of the best in the world. Many people are aspire to look like this. And so if you want to watch him train, do various videos, food, and so on, please go check out his channel. And so that's a wrap. Remember, if you want to join my newsletter, click the link in the description. We're giving away a free training program to all the subscribers and a free nutrition program. It's not ready yet, almost done. Please click the link in the description. Also, five free recipes and we give away free stuff every single week. And while you're here, we have harder than last time supplements, including turkesterone, pre-workout, pre-workout pump, protein powders, seco bars, all kinds of stuff. Please click the link in the description and the cookbooks, circle diet book, training books, coaching plans by me and my team. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for the algorithm. Don't forget about the bloops. Please watch those. GregDuset.com for coaching and GregDuset, IPB Pro on Instagram. And until next time, I am out.